Okay, guys. So this. Is, <clears throat> okay, guys. So this is uh, Jeff City, but John coming back. Um, I uh, told you guys earlier I was going to break open or turn off all of the spawners in this room, and then show you how they're built on the inside. And what I've done so far is I went on the top of every one of these containers or spawners. And I put torches around the edges, see it there, and then some on the spawner itself. Um, this way it's safe to go in there and actually show it to you. You know, I might get one or two spawn uh, while I'm in there, but it's, you know, it's going to be manageable. It's not going to be a flood of, you know, cave spiders, uh, which obviously is not manageable. You know, you're likely going to die if that happens. So... Without any further ado, let's uh, start talking about um, the math and stuff behind all of this. So this tract here is where it feeds over into this. Uh, what you want to do is you want to get your your mobs eight blocks away from your spawner as soon as possible. So that's why if you come from here over here, it says, you know, you count this. It's one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, and this is the ninth one. And you'll find the same story from over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth one. So once they get into the center channel, that means that the, the spawner room can spawn another mob because it'll only generate, I believe, three at a time. And uh, the quicker you get it out of that eight block radius, um, the quicker you're going to get another mob in there. Um, and that's the same way all the way around. You know, you see this one here that kind of comes off to the side and everything and, and does some fancy footwork. Uh, but as soon as it gets in here, as soon as possible, and by the way, it's coming out of this block here, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blocks away. Uh, just as soon, as soon as we possibly can. Um, this one up here with this weird loop de bob coming around, uh, it's not the most efficient one in the world, I'll admit to that. Uh, I didn't have a lot of space to work with with the skeleton spawner over here, um, but I think you saw in the last video that it, it cranks out the mobs, so um, I think the fact that there's three of them kind of makes up for how slow this one can be sometimes. So let's go ahead and uh, crack these guys open, see what they look like on the inside. Oops. Server's being a bit laggish tonight. So, what we got in here is a room that's one, two, three, four blocks tall. One block above the spawner, and then two blocks below it. Uh, cave Spider is uh, takes up the space of one by one by one. Um, so you want a block above and a block below, bare minimum, and then you got the space for the water to sweep it away. Uh, now these guys will spawn... Uh, up to five blocks away, I'm sorry, four blocks away uh, from the spawner. So that's why the rooms are, you know, nine wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have four blocks on either on any side of it for them to spawn. Uh, this keeps them from spawning outside of the room, which would be a very dangerous event. Uh, once the cave spiders are, are swept down this way, they're then swept this way to come into the uh, the main raceway. Uh, now what you'll notice is that the water at all points is moving the spider closer to where the character is at. Uh, this is very, very important. Oh, jeez, Louise. Really? Can't swim against the water. 
Um, I'll have to post a pogo. Um, anyhow, they always move you towards the character where you're standing and grinding away. Uh, this is very important because cave spawners or cave spiders, uh, they can see you right through walls. They don't ever need line of sight to start tracking you. Uh, they'll just start tracking you within 16 blocks. And if if the grinder bit was on the other side of the room, the spiders would be swimming against current the whole time, and you'd have a really, really poor output on your um, uh, your grinder. Now, once you get them into this little cubby like this, where it's a one-by-one -one racetrack, um, it, it no longer matters at that point, because they're going to follow the water um, wherever it goes. So... Up until you get them in a confined space like this, as long as they're in open space, you have to have that water moving in the general direction of your character to be able to have any kind of speed. Uh, this is the basic design of the spawners, um, or the spawning rooms, or spawning chambers, whatever you want to call them. Um, we're going to go ahead and crack open the other two real quick uh, just to show you that they are in fact the same. Uh, we won't go for the full um, description. Again, as you can see, water moves in that direction and then in this direction, all feeding in towards the main harvesting area. Close that guy back up. Uh, the one upstairs is slightly different. Um, as you notice, when you're here, you're pretty close to the center point of this spawning room of that guy there and the center point being that green that uh, mossy cobble in the middle so at first I had it going to one side or the other and I was having marginal uh, return so I thought you know again gotta get him in that one by one hole as quick as possible so I altered the room a bit so that um, <clears throat> so that the spiders in this one are going towards the middle. And the way I did that, if, again, this area up here, this is pretty straightforward. It's just a row of spawn or of uh, source blocks along that, that wall. I put a source here and over there, and then the two meet in the middle, and it kind of pushes them down that little one-by-one -one hole. Um, and that seems to do the trick. And then, you know, it comes out right here, and then comes out over into here. Um, so that's the inside of the spawning rooms. Oh, I should probably show you the inside of the skelly room, too. Again, the skeleton spawner is this guy right here. Uh, and to get up there, I put myself a little bit of dirt. Oh, that's right, I can get to it from... Just like this. Now you might notice that this guy is now one, two, three, four, five, six blocks high. Um, spiders are, or skeletons are, you know, obviously too high, where a cave spider is one high. And I don't know if there's any real science to this or not, um, but I was just following the same pattern. Uh, I gave it you know, the height of the mob above and the height of the mob below, plus one for the water. So that's why this one wound up being six high. Um, as best I can tell, skeletons don't track you uh, when you're when you're not, uh, when it doesn't get line of sight visibility to you. So I didn't worry too much about getting these guys to always funnel down into the direction of the player. Uh, also, I mean, the, the primary intent of the room is for XP, not arrows or bones. That's just kind of a happy bonus that comes in after the fact. 
Uh, if you want to see how the EMP is built, uh, just Google it. Ethos Lab EMP, it'll tell you all about this thing. And again, they just come across there, into the wall, and then down. Um, if you have any questions on this room, let me know. Oh, hey, before I forget, this is uh, what I call the hammerhead. Uh, essentially, this is some iron bar. Uh, that's a three deep hole down there. And then there's the water feeding the spiders in. There's one block above and one block below the water that are open. Um, and I think of this as kind of like a buffer, a buffer for the spiders. I, you know, I don't know if it's uh, really that helpful or not, but I like it. Um, on an SMP server, you know, they don't, the spiders aren't real consistent like they are in single player. In single player, they'll just, you know, queue up in one little ball. In SMP, they're all over the place, and it just gives them a little bit more room to be all over the place. Um, and then this little stairwell down here comes up diagonal with it. And what that allows you to do is pick up the drops that don't pop out of the hole while you're killing them. So, you know, if I put a bunch of blocks down in there, I can come down here, and they all pop back up. Um, at no point in using this system is it dangerous. Um, it looks like a fountain coming out of here. Uh, they're not going to hurt you. They just kind of push you around. Sometimes it's hard to get down in this hole uh, if you let it queue up too much before you get down in here. But they never hurt you. Um, because they can only hurt you from where they're supposed to be, not where they show up on your screen. In SMP, they'll kind of spawn out outside of where they're supposed to be. Um, and I think the client does that probably a performance thing where it's trying to predict what the spider would do or something like that. I, I don't fully understand it. Uh, but in SMP, they kind of all frail around. Uh, they won't hurt you. Uh, I have had one incident where I logged out from like, I think I was standing, you know, maybe like right here. And I logged out. I closed my client. I opened it back up. And whenever I spawned back here, there were one or two cave spiders that have gotten had gotten out at that point. And there was one isolated report of that from the other users of this um, XP farm. Uh, there's about, you know, ten players on this private server. And, uh, you know, they it's this is a pretty popular attraction on the server, so it gets wide use. And only one other person ever reporting an issue. I'm going to say it's pretty safe. Anyhow, uh, this is Jeff City John, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, walkthrough of the uh, XP farm. And uh, I'll see you later. Adios.